Marek from Plessy Rosotum. Um, I've got with me Kofri Going and Till Luca. Thank you very much for meeting with me in the Mulinga um, Hotel. Um, we met to talk about male skeletal alignment techniques. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you've got a lot of experience of the... Uh, can yes. you tell us a bit more about MAT? Yeah, uh, well I suppose I started in therapy 13 years ago. Uh, so I've been doing this quite a while. Um, we're doing a seminar here in Mullingar at the moment. We did my skeletal alignment techniques today and then for the next two days Till is going to be taking us through some of his advanced trainings which I think is going to be really interesting. Um, my skeletal alignment really I suppose shares some common lineage with uh, the advanced trainings in that a lot of their um, methodology kind of evolved out of the work of Ida Rolf. There's a strong Rolfing influence. Um, Eric Dalton then went in a slightly different direction with myoskeletal alignment techniques. He studied with um, osteopaths like uh, Dr. Philip Greenman, and he's brought a little bit of that kind of osteopathic approach into the soft tissue world. So there's a lot more treatment uh, of blending between soft tissue work, joint work, and even nerve work, and a big focus on the neurological system and how it responds to body work. So it's evolved a lot more out of just soft tissue work of working the muscles, working the ligaments, working the tendons, working the fascia, uh, into much more of a cohesive treatment geared towards generating stronger responses in the neurological system. So he talks particularly about posture and how posture is regulated by the pontomedibular reticular formation, PMRF, in the brain, and how the body work that we're doing is really creating most of its responses through uh, neurology rather than as was previously thought through tissue change per se. There's still a certain amount of that, and again, there's, we were talking about this different kind of um, ideologies and different theories about uh, how what we do works. Um, but I would say the big difference with myoskeletal compared to a lot of traditional massage is that kind of joint approach uh, of myofascial focus and a neurological focus to therapy. You mentioned the Ida Rolf and the fascia, and I know you are an expert when it comes to treating patients um, and the fascia and can you tell us uh, maybe a bit more and elaborate a bit more on, on treating the fascia because I, well, I know many yeah. patients don't know about the fascia and fascia is uh, the covering of all the muscles all the nerves all the arteries all the organs the whole body is enveloped in fascia my background as a rolfer began at the Rolf Institute uh, the same place Eric Trained. It's a little different approach we take in the workshops I teach, but we are thinking about fascia per se. There's a lot of different fascial approaches. Some focus more, say, on the physical properties of fascia. Some on, say, fascia's role in forming the brain and movement sense, mm -hmm. like Aubrey mentioned. And then there's probably a lot of other things attributed to fascia that may or may not have a basis, say, in science or consensual agreements about what fascia does. Mm -hmm. but it, So it's gotten more and more popular over the years, such that there's so many different things called fascial work that you could probably find uh, 10 people who talk about it in different ways. Mm -hmm. But certainly in the, the lineage that we share, going back to Ida Rolf and Rolfing, we're thinking of a number of things. We're thinking about how it informs movement and the idea of the body having a structure that is uh, uh, amenable to different kinds of input. Ida's revelation was that fascia was changeable. Now there's some debate about exactly the mechanisms of how it changes, but she really put forth the idea the body was a plastic medium, she said. So people can change the way they sit, stand, and move based on input from the practitioner's hands or their cues or imagery, things that they were giving to people. And what we've learned in the years since she began teaching her work in the 50s and 60s is that there's so many different ways into changing the way people experience themselves and themselves in movement. And the big one being sensation, movement, brain, what we know about pain, and then the evolving understanding of the actual stuff, the material we're made of, which turns out to be quite a bit of fascia. So we both met that you, you, you can help patients with back pain problems, for instance, and you it's can. a practical question. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, absolutely. That's what yeah. that's the motivator that people come to therapists. They either study either mm -hmm. either tradition that uh, often it's pain, 
for performance or something they want to do better, or they just want to feel better. So it's certainly something like that can mm -hmm. be motivated. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because you'd say the this type of work, everybody's gonna have some restrictions. Whether or not they experience that as a problem in day-to-day -day life in terms of influencing their sporting performance or as a chronic pain, when the effect of therapeutic touch is felt, I think it can have a benefit either on the very healthy individual or the individual suffering from something like back pain. And I think this type of work tends to be very successful as a, a method of people getting out of pain to facilitate getting back to a more active lifestyle, the kind of things that are gonna maintain good health. So we talk a lot about creating a, a window of opportunity that for people, particularly with back pain, they will get into avoidance behavior. They'll say, I can't do that because of my bad back. I can't lift that item. I can't do that activity or that exercise. And I think that manual therapy can oftentimes create enough of a release that the person can start to empower themselves to become a little bit more active. And that activity, exercise in particular, particularly very focused exercise to target the cause of their back pain, mm -hmm. can have a, a really positive impact and help to get them out of chronic pain and back to full function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the training that you offer um, till end of the, is it open to any healthcare professionals? And anybody can do training with you? Or? How do you do that? Okay. Well, I would say that people would need some foundation knowledge. So. We get people from a broad spectrum of disciplines. We get chiropractors, osteopaths, massage therapists, mm -hmm. physios, movement specialists, uh, doctors. There's a doctor on our uh, seminar this weekend. Um, so I think so long as there is a, a familiarity with uh, surface anatomy, a good foundation knowledge, we generally would say people with a, a foundation qualification in some form of body work. Then they're able to take in the information we're providing because it is advanced training. As Till's name would suggest as well that I think it's not necessarily for the person starting off, the person walking in off the street going, I'd like to learn this stuff. It's more for people who have a background to develop their skills in this direction. Um, but yeah, broad spectrum, but definitely some foundation training. Do you find this type of training is more popular among any other specific uh, profession? I mean, physiotherapists, yeah. and I know mm. many physios don't know much about rolfing or MIT. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm learning both. You know, how yeah. to work with the fascia and how to do MIT techniques. But I, I know loads of my colleagues. They they probably don't understand the concepts. We have a similar similar population that comes to our trainings, mm -hmm. and a lot of physios come. Yeah. And it tends to be physios who have uh, gotten really good at what they do and want the next step. They're interested in something more. They see the limitations of what they can do. Same true for other therapists like chiropractors or the US physical therapists, which are a little different. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of massage therapists too. They've learned what they do and they get good at it and they realize there's limitations and they're looking for something more. Mm -hmm. So that's why again, that's why we call it advanced training, because it's it is postgraduate and it gives people who are actually doing manual therapy who are interested in a yeah. new set of tools and a new perspective. Well, thank you very much for having me and speaking to me and thank you for your time and I look forward to having more training with you over the next couple of days. Over the good to have you here. Yeah, good yeah. to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.